Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I could not join you in person today because here at the WTO, we're in the final push before our 13th ministerial conference in Abu Dhabi later this month. We are working to deliver meaningful results for people in Africa and around the world. I'm really delighted with the themes you have chosen for this year's summit. Increasing trade and investment in value-added goods and services is necessary to accelerate growth and development across Africa. At present, however, the continent is underperforming. Africa accounts for only 3% or less of global trade. Our countries continue to export mostly rock, raw materials and commodities instead of adding more value to them. To reimagine economic growth in Africa, we need to reimagine global trade and investment. And I believe we have a window of opportunity to do so in spite of a global e economic environment now marked by slowing growth and increasing political uncertainty. Here are four reasons why. First, in an aging world, Africa's growing young population offers the workforce and markets of tomorrow. Second, regional integration through the African continental free trade area offers potential investors the prospect of a large and unified market of 1.4 billion people and a much stronger base for exporting to the rest of the world. Third, services are a bright spot in global trade. Nigerians know about the economic potential of the creative industries you're highlighting this year. And that story goes well beyond Whiskey, Burner Boy, and Nollywood, of which we are all proud. A quieter trend is the rapid growth in services traded digitally over computer networks. These sectors are creating major opportunities for tech-savvy young people, including fintech, and for women-owned businesses. And fourth, the best way to shockproof supply chains against the vulnerabilities exposed in recent years is to deconcentrate them by bringing more supply and value chains to Africa. In that way, African countries will become part of the mainstream of global production networks. We are arguing for this strongly at the WTO. And at the WTO, we are calling this re-globalization. Successful re-globalization would boost growth, job creation, and increase supply resilience. We already see it as companies add suppliers to reduce costs and diversify risks. But instead of making this process plus one, as we call it, China plus Vietnam or China plus India, we need them. And we are telling investors that they should diversify to more places. So it's China plus Nigeria plus Kenya plus Morocco plus Rwanda, Senegal, and so on. To successfully re-globalize, African countries need to offer attractive macroeconomic environments. That includes lowering trade costs. African businesses currently face trade costs equivalent to a 354% tariff. Imagine that, among the world's steepest, and one and a half times the level in high-income countries. For intra-African trade, the costs are one-fifth higher, equivalent to a 435% tariff. Better hard and soft infrastructure, electricity, roads, ports, swift border processes is only part of the picture here. We also need a supportive external environment, an open and predictable international economy. That's why the success of our upcoming ministerial, MC13, is so important. There we shall try to deliver agreements that will be useful to Africa's development. Let me highlight a few of the potential deliverables that will make a difference to Africa. First, an agreement on investment facilitation, which would sweep away bureaucratic barriers to investment and pave the, the way for the inward FDI needed. Intra-African investment, South-South and North-South, for African countries to ramp up value addition and trade. With regard to the marine and blue economy that you're focusing on this year, 12 million Africans depend on fisheries for their livelihoods. Right now, we're on the continent losing $5 billion each year because of illegal fishing and overfishing. At the WTO, we have reached an agreement to curb the harmful fisheries subsidies, $22 billion worth, that encourage these bad practices. We need more members to ratify this agreement so it can enter into effect. And we need to conclude the second phase of negotiations 
dealing with subsidies that encourage overcapacity and overfishing. We hope to deliver this at MC13. The digital economy is the wave of the future. As we know, young people across the continent, and women in particular, are active in the digital economy. At MC13, we will work to extend a long-standing moratorium that has enabled the growth of cross-border digital trade and facilitated participation by small businesses by sparing cross-border digital transmissions from import duties. In addition, we are working with the World Bank to help countries in Africa, eight to begin with, to overcome the digital divide, and Nigeria is one of them. The World Bank is bringing in about a billion dollars in funding to help support hard infrastructure development. And we at the WTO will provide support on building the regulatory capacity, the software that countries need to thrive in the global digital economy. Finally, together with the International Trade Center, our offshoot sister here at the WTO, at MC13, we will launch a $50 million fund to support women exporters in the digital economy. Let me stop here and urge you to focus on what Africa needs to do to further encourage investment, trade, and value addition. We will continue to work hard at the WTO to try to deliver for the continent. I wish you the very best for this trade and investment summit. Good luck and thank you.